an explosion of lavishly detailed figures swirling in gold compositions of black and white. Today I'll dive into the quite strange and beautiful work of Irish artist Harry Clark to figure out how he uses his pen and ink to create his imaginative illustrations. In the end of this video, I've set up a challenge for myself to see if I can draw an illustration in his style. Welcome everyone. I have just poured myself a cup of pitch black coffee because today is a day of contrast and of strangeness and of beauty. Let's put on our study glasses and take a closer look at the world of Harry Clark's illustrations. Decorative swirls. So the first piece that I want to take a look at is from Edgar Allan Poe's Tales of Mystery and Imagination. Just a first impression here, what a huge amount of elements and details going on here. Uh, I mean, come on. Um, and these are all drawn with a very careful and precise line work. It's amazing. It's a visual bombardment. And um, there are so many chores and detours for our eyes to explore. And what also strikes me here is that the elements are all very organic and they swell and intertwine with one another. Not only do we see these shapes on the figure's clothes, but also on other objects. These are very visually pleasing and decorative patterns. And this makes a lot of sense because Harry Clark was working in the period of both Art Nouveau and Art Deco. And he was a leading figure in the Irish arts and crafts movement. So these are all styles that praise the organic and the decorative and the beautiful. On top of that, he was also inspired by the French symbolist movement. Now all of these weird decorative patterns seem quite mystical. But seen in the light of the French symbolist movement who reacted against naturalism and realism, I would like to see the decorations as symbols representing the imaginative, something from a dream. I like this style a lot because first of all it's very playful and secondly it leaves up a lot of imagination for the viewer to kind of complete his or her uh, interpretation and meaning of the artwork really. There are no straight answers here, I like that. Bold use of contrast. Let's see how Harry Clark composes his illustrations. Um, I noticed some very bold compositions here. Look at the way the horses really stand out against the black background here. We have the fine lines working as a gray tone, while the black and white creates little explosions for our eyes, or they work as little pauses before our eyes travel further into the line work. Another composition is this one, which I absolutely adore. First of all, because I think it's so bold to place this huge white circle that takes up so much uh, place of the piece. It seems so demanding, um, but at the same time, it actually works to lead the eye into the face through this curve right here. It's such an extreme and yet subtle move, uh, and I'm a bit mind blown uh, by this way of composing a picture. A weird space. A thing that I have to mention is the way that Harry Clark's renders space, or the way he breaks the rules of perspective really. This one for instance. We have the road and the poles going this way, following the rules of perspective, but then these pitch black, organic, I don't know if it's trees or some sort of flowers, make it all seem very flat. And also the way the sky has this one tone and no aerial perspective, this enhances this sense of flatness. Apart from being an illustrator, Harry Clark was also a very productive stained glass artist and he also created works for churches. And I think this is quite visible in the way that the figures are often seen in profile or has this middle ages gothic way of representing the human figure about it. It also reminds me of Japanese woodblock printing. I don't know if you feel the same way. Slender figures, dark eyes. So all of the figures that we see in his works all seem very slender. I really do like his way of drawing faces, the dark cheekbones and the blackness around his eyes, almost like makeup. Again, there's a kind of gothic thing or maybe German expressionism going on here and it also reminds me very much of the artwork of Gustav Klimt and Egon Schiele, um, also artists related to Art Nouveau. When drawing faces, Harry Clark uses the pen to render a few points and a few hatchings, just enough to describe the shape of the bone structures. And again, we have this contrast going on by this effect. The eyes are huge and again, they create this contrast to the white uh, surface of the skin. And um, this makes the eyes communicate so much mystery. It's like staring into a black lake. Quite beautiful symbol when we are talking about Harry Clark. 
Okay, after this short analysis here, um, it's time for me to draw my own illustration uh, inspired by Harry Clark. Let's get to it. These are a couple of sketches. It might be a bit difficult to see, but I'm going after a diving scene and I'm very inspired by the tales of Jules Verne. I think this could be very much in the spirit of Harry Clark with its adventurous and magical atmosphere. Um, so this is the pencil sketch that I've prepared. I want to have my diver standing on the seafloor surrounded by eel grass and sneaky sea creatures. And he's going to be looking up at this um, old sunken ship. The only light source will be his lantern so that I can have him surrounded by pitch blackness to really get that contrast going on. I will be using a Pilot GTX C4 pen for the fine lining and then a couple of thick markers, uh, one of them being a CD marker actually. But uh, you know, whatever it takes to make uh, things black, I'm going to use. I'm starting out by this seaweed here and um, it really fits into the universe, the seaweed, because automatically I have these nice swirls going on uh, to work with. And also they work in the conversation to kind of frame my character in the diving suit. Actually, this is a part of Inktober as well. And the prompt for this one was uh, vessel. The shipwreck here being my interpretation of the word vessel. Then I'll have some corals down here in the corner. I draw these straight from imagination. If you want to know how I can draw corals straight from the top of my head, it's because I sketch a lot from life and this really helps me to store all sorts of things in my back head. Like it's sort of like a visual library to me. Uh, and the corals here I actually drew a while ago at a sketchbook trip I had at the Zoological Museum of Copenhagen. Uh, you could feel free to check out this, this trip in the link here in the corner if you want to see. adding some black down here between the corals. This will make the corals pop and give the eyes that sensation of a little explosion going on uh, when we're going from black to white. This is the contrast that we talked about earlier. So inspired by Harry Clark's work, The Mermaid, which ha has all these sea creatures in it, I also want to have some creatures in here. So here's a moray eel. It looks really scary and I would like to have a bit of scariness in here, trying to convey the feeling that our diving guy is in unknown territory. I'm going to draw it with an open mouth um, to, to have it seem even more threatening. Um, and of course it has to be the spotted moray eel so that I get to decorate as much as possible. I have to keep thinking about decoration, decoration and decoration.
I continue here to do some fine lining on the diver and I'm trying to be as precise as I can in my line work and it's, it's really difficult to be uh, really precise um, because my line as an illustrator um, is more loose and more um, sketchy in a way, more, more bumpy in its line quality so I'm really put to work here. Getting in some dark semi-gothic vibes going on here, especially around the eyes. As I've mentioned, I really want almost everything to be pitch black in the illustration, but the lantern here is going to create a very round and stylized ray of light. Um, here I'm of course inspired by the work with the round white circle that I've just praised in the analysis. Sneaking in another fish here, uh, swimming and almost hiding deep in the eelgrass. Now it's time for the eelgrass. Uh, I want to have all of the seafloor covered in these swirling organic shapes. I'm trying to make sure that I get a notion of a decorative pattern again, but at the same time I want to communicate the feeling of the eelgrass waving in randomized waves, um, affected by the water. So it's kind of a balance between uh, abstraction and the figurative. Thank you. 
I'm going to draw the tube of his oxygen supply very dark. This will create contrast and make it stand out as an important element in the illustration. This is a quite intuitive move here in the process, something I did not plan, but I feel like communicating some more danger in here. There's something fragile about having his oxygen that he's so relying on um, lying here in the open and there's a fish close to it and we have a moray eel also in the corner. Who knows what might happen here. It's time to work on the shipwreck. I want these lines of the wood planks um, to be visible, but I need to be aware of creating a sense of flat space. Therefore, I use my ruler to add the same amount of distance between the planks and have no curved lines in there. Normally, if I had to obey the rules of perspective, they should lead to a vanishing point. But this here will make it seem very flat and more like a surface, a kind of a block which I will decorate afterwards with something you will be excited to see. I decorate the ship with these barnacles. Now before this clip here, I have actually been drawing these for about half an hour, maybe more. It takes a while because they're so small. Barnacles are crustaceans, um, critters related to crabs, lobsters and shrimp actually. You often see them on the bottom of boats. I like the shape of them and again, like the eelgrass, they work perfectly as an element of both a figure that underlines my illustration, like this thing that we're, uh, we're in this sitting on the water and it's kind of a mysterious um, adventure and we have creatures. At the same time, I can make them like sort of an abstract patterns, like the eelgrass. And I think this is very much in the spirit of Harry Clark and it's, it's really fun just decorating a surface. This is something that I'll definitely keep in mind for later illustrations in my work. How to draw the wooden planks? Well, I just have to take one glimpse at a work by Harry Clark, and then I know. It should be black with the rings of the wood being in white lines. This is the really nice thing about following another artist's style, um, because all answers as to how I should go about drawing things are right there to pick for me. It's like having a dogma or a rule set uh, for you, and it feels quite liberating. Adding some hatchings here to give the diver a grey tone because I want to have um, most contrast going on at his helmet and at the lantern. I can't help adding a ball fish coming from behind of the ship here. Again, this sense of a looming darkness to it, I like this. Um, it could also have a deeper symbolical meaning, just like everything else I have been drawing in this illustration. Actually, I have a thought, a deeper thought about most of the elements in this drawing. Question is, what I think is the same as you think? This is an invitation to write in the comment section if you have an interpretation or an idea of what I have tried to symbolize, either in general with the drawing or with every different element, such as the ball fish here. I have started painting the background pitch black with my markers, but here in the corner I will have a couple of sea creatures swimming to create some atmosphere. And now all there is to it actually is to use a lot of 
markers here to get the rest of the background dark, like completely dark. Just making sure here that I have some white space around the eelgrass so that they don't disappear, but rather stand out as elements of the foreground. I am about to be finished now, but I need some details. First off, I completely forgot to do the bubbles from his oxygen supply, and really important element. Luckily, I have some opaque white paint, so I can bring them in here. And then um, I need to do a bit of work on his face. We need some little hatchings here and there to convey his facial structure, adding to that slender notion and that gothic style. And done! I'm very satisfied with this one. I think I might even take this into Photoshop and add some contrast and have it for sale at some point. This was so fun and cool to do. Thank you everyone folks for tuning in. Remember that if you like this video, give it a huge curved and strange thumbs up. I have to really make a huge shout out to uh, Noon, who uh, reminded me of this amazing artist here. Thank you very much, Noon. If you guys out there have another artist that would be exciting for me to take a look on and try to maybe draw in his or her style, feel free to join me in the comment section. Till next time, have fun drawing. Mm -hmm.